Hello everyone, this is John from RPGs and More. And in this episode, we're going to go over the skills in the Prince Valiant storytelling game. Excuse me. So, there are two categories of skills in this game. You have your uh, basic skills and your advanced skills. The basic skills are the ones that are kind of more, um, they're more commonly available to the, the young fledgling knight, whereas the advanced skills kind of help flesh out the setting a bit more and add, add more nuance and more options, while at the same time not necessarily, um, at the same time just being something that might be a little more special case scenario. But let's go ahead and get started. And and to talk about these, I'm going to be using the cheat sheet from the Alexandrian that I mentioned in my previous video. All right, on your basic skills, you have agility. Agility is based off of your brawn attribute. It involves physical tasks such as speed and st or including speed and strength, running, swimming, jumping, dodging, climbing, swinging on ropes, etc. It's not used in normal combat, except for special tactical situations. Okay. Archery is also based off of brawn, and it is. Um, you can roll versus a difficulty target and you lose coins equal to the difference if you fail. Or, sorry, if you succeed, the target loses coins equal to the difference. Uh, easy is a point blank range and that's a difficulty of one. And normal is a difficulty of three, and that's a typical combat range. Let's just give you some ideas. Okay. Arms is also based off of brawn. Arms represents the sword, shield, lance, spear, axe, and other uh, medieval melee weapons when fighting in armor, on horseback, or on foot. So, you know, it, it doesn't really differentiate between the different weapons. Arms covers all of it. It's a general training in combat. I, I kind of, I can appreciate that because it does simplify things. And when you're doing a, a story-based system where the kind of weapon that you're using is less important than the fact that you are trained to use it, um... I think that makes some sense here. I think that's kind of where they're going. They they want to simplify things so that the story moves faster and we're not getting into the nitty gritty of, of detail of what weapon versus what armor. That's saved for other systems, excuse me. All right, the battle skill. This one can be used with either brawn or presence. It is used in mass combat. It involves leadership, tactics, siege craft, logistics, and other military skills. So if you were, for example, leadership, tactics, siege crash, lo siege craft, and logistics, like, there's all reasons why presence would be used for those as you're using your force of personality in order to make other people follow directions and do what they need to do. Or using your brawn when you're trying to lead the, the troops in battle in, in the moment. Okay. Brawling. That's based on brawn. It involves fists, crude knives, clubs, and other hand-to-hand -hand unarmored combat. So, when you're fighting with a sword and shield while wearing your armor, or even if you weren't wearing armor, but you're still fighting with a sword and shield, then you're using arms. But if you get disarmed 
and decide to go after your opponent's throat with your hands or decide to try to grapple them, you're, it looks like you're using brawling. Unless there's a separate grappling skill, but I don't see one. No, I don't think there is. There's not a special grappling skill. All right. After that, we have courtesy. It is based on presence. It involves fine manners, social rituals, and civilized behavior. So if you want to uh, impress somebody with your social skills, if you want to impress somebody with your manners at the dinner table, let's say you are going to a nice meal uh, and you are meeting, your character is meeting their uh, the family of the person that they wish to marry for the first time, that would be a courtesy check to see how, how well you're going to do with that. All right. Uh, dexterity is based off of brawn, and it is physical tasks involving grace or precision. It is not hampered by armor. Okay. Fellowship is based on presence, social interactions with peers, kings with kings, knights with knights, etc. An honorable, an honorable skill that cannot be used for direct gain. So, in other words, your fellowship is used not to try to persuade somebody to give you a boon. You're trying to use your fellowship because you want to actually create bonds of friendship with people or, or maintain them. You, let's say they've been damaged and you need to fix them or you just want to maintain a relationship with somebody. That's, that's what fellowship is for. It's for going out with your peers, even if it's a bunch of squires, all the squires kind of agree to go and they, you know, they all have time off and they agree to go to have a drink together. That's fellowship. Same with knights. All right? Glamory or glamour is based on presence. It is charisma, seduction, and social uh, dazzle. It's used for emotional dominance or influence against a single individual. Emotional dominance against a single individual. That's, but you're basically trying to cast the spell of your personality upon that person and make them um, see you as perhaps greater than you are or see you as someone who is very important to them. So, Healing. Healing is, un is not unique, but it is very special in the fact that it does not key off of either brawn or presence. Healing is used alone. And it is the, let's see, plus one brawn per head thrown. Multiple attempts allowed if there is time, but only the best result counts cannot be used on oneself or during combat so if you have three points in healing then you can toss three coins and for every heads that you get then you heal another person by one brawn for each head uh that's considering that most characters are going to have between three and four brawn that's actually pretty good. That's uh, I, I know that doesn't sound great, but brawn's not a huge number. And with a little dedication, you could actually get that healing number pretty high if you really wanted to be a character focused on healing. Let's say you were, like, you were determined that you wanted to play a, a priest or a sister who was really focused on the healing arts, you know, the closest thing you could get to playing a, a Dungeons and Dragons style cleric 
in the Prince Valiant system, then the healing skill would be very important to you. And uh, they, they would find that it's not too hard to be able to heal a lot of brawn damage. I, I kind of like this. You still need tools and things like that because it is a, a story-based system. Excuse me. Hunting. Keys off of brawn or presence. Stalking. Bear, boar, stag, and uh, rabbits with bow, spear, or snare in the woods. It's also uh, used with hawkery. I believe that is how I pronounce that word. But when, you are, when you're hunting with a hawk on your fist, you're wearing that leather glove and the hawk rests right here. And then, uh, you know, you take the, the mask off at the right moment and release the hawk into the air in order to make them fly and target a, a particular group of pigeons or whatnot. Um, that's, you know, hawking. And that's what you would use hunting for the hawking skill. All right. Also, the employment of hounds. It included in this skill is knowledge of the game animals and their habits. So if you want to have a character who knows how to find the game animals in the forest, knows how to hunt, uh, hunting is, is very important for that. That's actually uh, just as important as being able to ha make that ranged attack in order to take down the beast, because without a good hunting skill, unless you have a uh, a companion who has great hunting skill you're not going to get close to the animals they'll they'll just not be there okay jousting is based off of the brawn skill or sorry the brawn ability it is a uh, customary actions necessary to the tournament including courtly bows and flourishes heraldry and ritual knowledge also prowess with the blunted lance which would be a simple opposed resolution not an extended simple opposed so this is uh, more particular to your your character if your character want you want your character to be someone who's a great showman when it comes to the, the joust they're really good at just uh, showing off and being excellent being the best jouster they there may not the the tournament skills they have may not necessarily translate as well into actual combat skills because they're training specifically uh, for the tournament they're training to to get their lance into uh, that ring and collect that ring they're training to do tricks with their lance in order to impress a crowd things like that uh, they're they're training their horse and themselves in order to perform stunts which is um, the, the further along and the, fir the more advanced tournaments became the more specialized the skills needed in order to to partake in them became and the, the more they became divorced from the pure combat skills which was how tournaments first started they, they started out as a way for knights to kind of show off their skills in battle in order to they were kind of like a resume uh, I am the best knight. I won this tournament and that tournament and this tournament, and that's why you want uh, want to be my liege lord. That's why you want me to to have fealty to you, and therefore you want to reward me because I'm going to be a really great vassal to you because I'm so good. Um, but as time tra traversed, it became a bit more of a spectacle and less of a less of an a job application if you will. Um, all right. Oratory was the, is based off of presence. And oratory is... Um, gaining people's attention, influencing, guiding, or convincing multiple listeners simultaneously. Oratory is the ability to give speeches. Uh, the ability to uh, give a, a fiery sermon if you are a cleric, or a rousing pre-battle speech if you are a warrior or a leader. It could be uh, your means of trying to convince a crowd 
that your cause is just uh, if you're on trial or um, any number of things really that just involve talking to a crowd. It also is just entertainment. Uh, if you are trying to play someone who's a bit more like a bard, they would have a great oratory skill because they're really great at, at telling stories and reciting poems, and singing songs and things like that. All right, and then finally, riding. It's based off of brawn. When attacking with a lance, a successful riding skill adds extra coin uh, to arms or jousting. An odd number of heads equals a lance broken. So what how that pertains now you know like why would i want to break my lance you know why why would i use this thing well uh the lances that were used in jousting especially in tournaments were often designed to break that was the intention uh, they would they would make them that way a it's more dramatic for the crowd and b the thought was that if the lance broke easily that there'd be less of a chance of actually killing the knight uh, instead of just knocking them off of their horse. The whole goal, goal of the tournament was to knock them off their horse, not to kill them. So uh, a war lance, I don't think those were ever weakened in order to break like a, a jousting lance or a blunted lance would have been. Um, but the riding check is, you know, you succeed in that and you get extra dice. That would also depend on how good of a horse you're riding. Excuse me. In our previous video, we talked about the quality of your mount and how that can change your, the coin values you're tossing for various checks. Well, the riding skill pertains into that, so the, uh, the, the quality of your horse affects your ability to make a riding check. Okay? So those are all the basic skills. Those are the, the ones that you kind of are going to encounter first. If you want to make an advanced character, you're going to run across the following skills. First, alchemy. That is a limited skill. It means that it's limited in the sense that there's, you're not always going to be able to use your presence with it. All right? Or your brawn. Alchemy can be used for identifying elements like gold, diamond, or making simple herbal salves, drugs, and potions. Creations should not violate the laws of science. Rarely added to presence. So this is important here because in the Prince Valiant setting, while strange and sometimes semi-magical things can happen, it still tries to follow what we know of as science at the time. Now, there are some cases where this is thrown out the window in later parts of the game, which we may talk about when we get into the scenarios. But uh, I like them making the statement that it should follow the rules of science. Um, so you could, if, for example, if you wanted your character to uh, put a few things together and have an ancient recipe from another country that they could use to make um, a very basic black powder. That would be a use of the alchemy skill, but then they, because the elements for that were not necessarily common in uh, medieval Great Britain, it, would, it might be hard, or in this case Camelot, it might be hard to come across all the elements needed to make the black powder. So, I would not necessarily recommend that as a goal for your character, but it just as, as one example of something you could make with alchemy. We're also talking about healing salves, a uh, much, more, much more basic thing. People knew how to make uh, salves that you could add to a bandage that would help a wound heal better, uh, or heal faster, or uh, close properly. That is historical knowledge, knowledge which uh, forms a lot of the basis of what later became the pharmaceutical industry. But a lot of it, it came from the old, the wise, 
thoughts of those in the medieval and then the Renaissance era as they tried to experiment with various things and figure out how this all worked. And they were influenced by other, other cultures uh, from overseas that would bring in their knowledge and talk about the things that they knew and share ideas and, and people would learn how to make, make things better. That's how you know, we all we figured out that you know, leeches can actually be a good thing in moderation. Um, so an alchemist would kind of know a, a, a lot about those elements, but also identifying gold, silver, diamonds, copper, being able to like look at a, a vein in the earth and not just say, well, that looks like that's a, a vein of gold, but being able to like take off a bit and test it with your, uh, your alchemy kit and to say, yes, that confirmed that is gold. Not only is that gold, that is pure gold and we want, you want to mine here. It's kind of a cool thing. All right, uh, next we have bargaining, which is based off the presence ability. Bargaining is negotiation, contracting, or trading. Also used for an estimation of worth. So the, the bargaining, that's not just bargaining for items. Like you're, I'm trying, I want to shop for a good a suit of armor, so I'm going to use my bartering skill in order to get the best deal I can. Well, that's one use of it. But bargaining can also be, I want this person to do something for me in exchange for a service that I'm going to offer them. That's still a bargain. That's still communication. That's still uh, something you can use the skill for, especially if that's the skill that you have and you don't have anything else would influence that. Because remember, fellowship isn't about persuading people. Fellowship is about just maintaining fellowship and having a good time, enjoying the party. So crafting can use brawn or presence. Add brawn for workmanship, but add presence for a fine design. So if your character is trying to craft a, a wagon and they just want to make a, a good, solid wagon, then they would just be a brawn check to see how well they can make this wagon. But they would use their presence if they're not trying to make a wagon or, or they're trying to make it a fancy wagon. So maybe you, you do the presence check afterwards in order uh, the presence and crafting check afterwards to add all the decorations to this wagon, add all the, the fine details that make it uh, a work of art, make it something that a nobleman might want to purchase in order to, to travel with their household on. All right. Disguise uses presence. Usually, usually only a few simple props are needed. Okay, I think that's pretty obvious. We all have a basic understanding of what disguise would allow us to do. Farming uses presence. Knowledge of crops, the land, weather, animal husbandry, and prices. That's all of it. That's the everything that has to do with farming. So that's why it keys off of presence. Because... Everything is involved with that. Now, if, if you were having a, a more detailed session about farming and you wanted to have them make a check to see if they could actually plow a very tough field with had a lot of stones in it, um, well, one, I'm not sure why you'd want to make a check for that. Just go ahead and have the character, you know, the characters can describe how hard they're working, especially if they have a brawn that's more than two points in it. Um, but you could use a, a farming brawn check for that if you really wanted to, but it, it keys mostly off of presence because of all the other things involved. And I think that's kind of neat. All right, uh, gaming keys off of presence. Games and gambling, chess, checkers, card games, dice games, simple opposed resolution. So that's one pass of the coins, one toss each. For each player and then whoever gets the most successes wins that's a very simple thing you can do and and, and that's kind of neat because you can use get those games as a backdrop for a lot of different things like conversations and 
and social disputes and things like that. And uh, so it's nice to have a simple way to make the resolutions. But at the same time, if you wanted to turn a chess game into a full scene, then that would be a neat way to turn it into an extended uh, opposed role where it goes all the way down into until someone loses one of their pools, one of their presence pools altogether. And that would make it a more extended scene, especially if this if this game of chess wasn't just like oh, a, you know, a game for fun, but was actually much more meaningful. Uh, involving the also involving negotiation things like that so that's an idea lore none so like healing lore is its own skill there are it doesn't go off of presence it doesn't go off of brawn knowledge of history geography and peoples includes foreign customs landmarks excuse me and politics of major cities This is why it doesn't key off of your presence. Your presence is your natural ability to kind of affect the world around you. Lore represents how much you've studied, how much you have learned about the world around you. And in an age when knowledge does not travel well and often must travel by word of mouth because writing while, is, while, while present is not necessarily something that not everyone can read. And so books tend to only mean something to uh, those with a higher level, level of education, which is a very small number of, of this is a very small number of people. Even nobles, high ranking nobles, not all of them would know how to read. Uh, they might hire someone else to do their reading for them because they just couldn't be bothered when they were younger. And then when they became older, they were too embarrassed to admit that they didn't know how or, or or just it wasn't important to them. So that's why lore is its own skill. It's kind of unique and I, I'm kind of okay with that. I think that's appropriate to the uh, the setting that they are describing here. And it might be appropriate for your role playing setting too if you wanted to use this game without the Prince Valiant IP. Mathematics, that's limited, okay. The handling of numerical and geometric calculations, including navigation of strange waters or strange lands, tracking the moon or stars, the construction of simple walls and small defensive towers, the planning and provision of an expedition can be added to presence probably when you're trying to use your mathematical ability in order to persuade somebody that this is the right place to put this foundation or that this we are going in the correct direction because that's the, that's our landmark right over there but otherwise if you're just trying to figure out for yourself where things are then you would probably just have to understand mathematics to be able to plot your course i think that's that's a neat way separating that from brawn and and uh, separating that from brawn entirely makes sense. And having it only limited application to presence also kind of makes sense because it is a highly specialized skill, just like lore and healing. And if you haven't actually gained an education in mathematics, then you're not really going to be able to use it. Uh, that's something that we in our modern era tend to take for granted because it's taught in our schools uh, to all of us from a very young age. Ba basic mathematics is a core tenet of our education system. It exists that way because for a very long time, mathematics was not part of our core education. In fact, we didn't have a core education. And uh, we paid that price. We, we learned through the centuries of the use and the importance of mathematics, and that's why it's important to us. But in the time that this game seeks to emulate, we had not learned that lesson yet. It was still valued, but it was not ubiquitous. All right. Anyway. Money handling, separate from mathematics. Interesting. Money handling does key off of presence. 
It is a financial equivalent of the battle skill, the handling of property and lands, the precursor, precursor of modern financial management. Why is this separated from mathematics? Well, because mathematics would be the calculation of all of that stuff. Money handling is the person knowledge of what to do with it. Because just being able to count your wealth doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't, if you're not able to figure out what's a good investment and what isn't. And how do I tell? And that's where money handling comes in. It, it, it's, it, it looks like it's involved with investments. It looks like it's involved with um, understanding exchange rates, things that are that require knowledge greater than excuse me, knowledge and ability to interact with people greater than just pure mathematics. Because so much of handling real estate and other property is also being able to communicate with people and get your own ideas across. Uh, you can be a really great person with numbers, but that won't make you a good realtor. But being able to handle money, or sorry, you can be really great with the numbers. But that's not going to make you a great banker. Knowing how to handle money and knowing how to handle the people who handle the money is also an important thing. And that's why this one keys off of presence, I believe. I believe that. And I, that's why I, that's why I kind of like it in that sense. And why I think it's separate from, mon from uh, mathematics itself. All right. Uh, Naturalize, keys off of presence, knowledge and sympathy with animals, birds, fishes, etc. Includes knowledge of hunting, fishing, and or and other scavenging. So this is a little more, a little different than the hunting skill. The hunting skill is used for hunting game animals. Naturalize looks like it focuses on other animals, animals that aren't necessarily game animals. They aren't necessarily farm animals. They are, uh, you know, like just animals out in the wild that aren't connected to our food networks and what works for, and, and so naturalize is about them. It's about understanding things. There's also, uh, for example, the people that used to explore the world and try to make copies and understand various plants and animals from other countries referred to themselves as naturalists. And that's because they believed that, uh, uh, to my knowledge, they believed that nature itself was worth studying. And so that's what they would do. It wasn't about societies. It wasn't about cultures. It was just about understanding the natural world that surrounded these things. So that's the naturalist skill, or naturalize skill. I like it. Poetry slash song. That's presence. And it is uh, the playing of an instrument and the telling of stories can also be added to courtesy or glamoury. So this is the one, like I, we mentioned oratory below. But if you really wanted to dive deep into poetry and song, then obviously you want to be making an advanced character and using this skill. If you if you were just using the basic rules only, then I would I would use oratory for that. But if you're using advanced, then we're looking at poetry and song. And this has and the reason why this can be added to those others because you can have more than one skill contribute to a toss, but you have to be able to explain it. And this one explain this one uh, does it very nicely because you can use poetry or song in order to increase your courtesy with other people, especially if you're at an event where sharing of stories is considered part of the event. And then as far as glamoury, someone using poetry and song with their glamoury, that is literally Romeo looking up at Juliet as she's on the balcony 
and speaking poems to her to get her attention. That is exactly what that role can be used for, uh, those kind of actions. So think of it that way. And you would, therefore, you would combine your personal glamour, your, your, your desire to influence just one person with the, po or the poem or the song that you are singing and uh, then your presence. And so you're using your presence and two different skills in order to make that toss. All right. Read slash write a language. That's a limited. It is a, val a value of three in this indicates competence. And then it goes on to list that uh, in this time, they only recognize the written languages of the, uh, the Arabic languages, Chinese, uh, the Druidic language, or it says Dravidic, but uh, Greek, Latin. Uh, they do mention the Mayan language and Sanskrit. So... I, that's that's specific to the Prince Valiant IP. Um, I believe that anthropological, sorry, the an anthropology since this strip began to be written has proven that there's a lot more written languages out there. Uh, for example, the Nordic rune language is the first one that comes to my, my mind, even though it wasn't really used much for a lot of things. It was used and it did exist. Uh, so, and then there's the old, old you know, this is one of those, those things where you kind of either you buy into what the setting is selling or you do a deep dive into actual history at the time that the setting is supposed to exist and uh, have some fun with that. Frankly, I would not worry about that too much. Um, well, I wouldn't worry about the details of which language too much. Just figure out something that works for your game and go with it. So um, if you don't like the, the ones that are listed here and you think that there should be more on that list, then add more. If you are only planning on using two or three items from that list because you don't want your campaign to go in a you know traveling all over the world then you're fine that that's that's fine just make sure your players know ahead of time so they don't consider putting points into this and having a character that learns multiple languages um so it says rarely added to presence and where I think that, that can uh, come into is, say you're trying to learn. You're trying to gain more knowledge in a language, and so you would probably want to use your presence to use your basic knowledge of a language's uh, information in order to also get your, your point across and then maybe get someone to be charmed enough by your, your use of language in order to maybe correct you a little bit if you made a mistake or, or help you gain more ability with that skill. So I would, I would use it for that one. If, but if you're just trying, trying a basic communication and you're not trying to put on the charm and you're just trying to say, I need a glass of water, um, then that's a straight roll. All right, and then we have ship handling. That is based on brawn. It's dealing with wind, weather, water, current and the tides reminds us that navigation is handled by mathematics and the knowledge of coastlines is lower so that's important that's an important thing here that's important distinction so knowledge of coastline is under lore and then navigation is mathematics so if you want to be a a, a, a very skilled sailor or officer on a ship, then you're going to need to have ship handling, mathematics, and lore, in addition to any other basic skills you think your character should have in order to have a chance to do these things. 
uh, to, to be complete with them. If you wanted to just be like a deck hand, your character represent, represent a deck hand, then ship handling alone is enough. And you could even actually make a character that doesn't have ship handling, but has mathematics and lore. So they can be a great navigator, but they don't know jack about how to reef the sails. That's a, a cool limitation to build into a character if that's a direction that you want to go. Because then what if that character is put in a position where they're the one who has to do that, has to reef those sails, or they're the one that has to, you know, to pull an oar properly. Um, and what do they do? And that can create some interesting drama. What do people around them do when they realize that this person that's been telling them where to go for the past year has no ability to, ability to actually perform the functions that need to be performed? Um, all right. Speak language. That keys off of presence. Characters are assumed to have three points in their native tongue. This is not noted on their sheet. One point allows a survival in areas without offense. Two points can get directions, buy supplies, and receive simple information. So this is separate from read and write languages. And this is neat because speaking many different languages is something that a lot of people could do. It was more common, I think, in, in some of these older societies than it is in, uh, in the modern day. Although it's, it's fairly common modern day because we make it part of our education system, but um, it was not uncommon to meet people that could speak three or four different languages because they needed to in order to do business or when they're traveling. And so I kind of like the fact that you can just get a basic, it's, you spend one of your character points in any other language aside from your own that you want to learn. And that allows you to have some basic communication in it. So that's kind of neat. And if you want to create a, uh, if you want a campaign that's about traveling to many different locations, this is a good skill to, to you know, give your characters a heads up they might want to invest in that. Or it's something that they want to develop as the game goes on. It's a good, a good thing to look towards when, it, when you're trying to expand your character. And last but not least, stealth. Keys off of brawn. Cannot be performed while wearing armor without a penalty. And that stealth is a very, you know, it, it's stealth. It's the ability to sneak around. It's the ability to perform sleight of hand. Actually, no, sorry. Sleight of hand is dexterity, but stealth is about going unnoticed. That's why it's based on brawn, not presence. Presence is the ability to make yourself noticed. Stealth is going up brawn because you are trying to make your body as quiet as possible. <laughs> anyway, so that's a general rundown of what the skills are, both the basic and the advanced skills in the Prince Valiant storytelling game. Hopefully this information is useful to you if you are ever curious about this game and, and why it, it does what it does and, and maybe how you can use these various skills. I hope I provided some interesting bits of information or at least helped some of it make a little more sense. Thank you for joining me on this. I, this is one of my favorite systems and I enjoy talking about it as I'm trying to just learn it and understand it and play little solo games using it along the way. Um, those are not gonna. Those ha so far have not made it into onto the channel because they're not that interesting yet. But it's my. It's just me figuring. Okay, how does this work? And 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 going through the motions. So someday I plan on doing a another solo uh, campaign using the Prince Valiant storytelling system. And uh, and when I'm ready to do that, then we'll, I'll put that on on the channel. But anyway, thank you again for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful day and peace be with you. Bye-bye.